Greetings everyone and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, where in today's episode we are going to be trying to make right a couple of things that have been a little bit inefficient about the base, or, well, by a little bit inefficient I mean downright broken. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to implement a bit of uh, a change to the way my gas pumps work. The reason that this has been going poorly is that despite it being quite obvious when you actually sit down and look at this when you're not playing, or at least when you're not commentating, I was under the assumption that the valves effectively round robined all of the outputs. So as there were four outputs, it would send one here, then one there, then one there, then one there. But if you actually look at this, it's, it's obvious immediately that that is not the case. So what we're going to do first is we're going to address that. And to that end, we are going to need to deconstruct a, a few little things. We're going to do this on a priority eight. So there, we'll get rid of all of those. And furthermore, we are going to get rid of this one as well. So all the way along there, there will just be two gas outputs. One over here, one down there. And this is where all of the oxygen really is needed. I will, at this point, reinstall the gas permeable tiles. Because I'm going to desperately need that air to be flowing throughout the base. Later on, we might... Uh, adjust that a little bit further. Now, what did we just research? We researched temp temperature modulation. That is actually quite fantastic. Uh, yes, we are going on to insulation. That is going to be necessary in our plans. Now, let me just have a quick look at our hatch. How's our hatch doing? How's our wee hatch? Hatch? How are you, hatch? Overheated. Uh, I'm going to need to drop the, the temperature in there quite a lot actually we don't want our hatch to die our hatch is going to be integral to our plans i tell you in tech a roll um okay so what we can do possibly is uh we may need to get some stuff set up to allow us to move um some cool oxygen into that room in fact that might well we'll have a look at that uh once i finish with these now the second thing that we need to have a look at is unfortunately I am aware that there is a bug in the way that liquids work, but up until now I've been more or less of the opinion that, well, since this is an alpha game, yeah, the bugs are going to happen. There's no point in trying to plan around something that is going to change in the very near future, but a lot of people were getting quite, uh, quite flustered, quite distressed by this approach. So I'm just going to go over a few things that some people do not seem to know about it, and then we'll try and address this bug. First and foremost, up until very recently, valves were as broken as anything else. So, simply using valves to try and um, change the pressure in the in the pipes wasn't going to actually fix anything. That has now been fixed, or so I am told. Apparently, the devs have mentioned in a recent stream that the valve issue has been fixed. So, at least on that score, we can now uh, install a liquid valve. Oh, wait, we're going to have to research that one first. Where would you be? Um... With that, ah, gas valve over there. Yeah, that's actually more important to me then. So we'll get on that. But the liquid valves now do uh, maintain the liquid that goes into them. They don't lose anything. The problem with machines, and this may actually be fixed on most machines as well at this point, but I haven't got confirmation on that, is that when, for example, an electrolyzer takes 10 kilograms of water, it'll use it all up and only produce its stated amount, which is it's stated for... Um, it takes in 1,000 grams of water, produces 888 grams of oxygen. It'll produce 888 grams of oxygen whether you put in 10 kilograms of water or, or not. It has no overflow capacity. It doesn't remember how much went in there. It just performs its process and then gets rid of all of the water that's inside it and produces 888 grams of oxygen. Or at least that was the main bug. Again, this may have changed at this point, but we'll operate under the assumption that it hasn't for now. So that is obviously a problem. One thing you can do with a valve is you can reduce the pressure in the pipe so it's only getting enough water to pre perform its operation and not more than that. However, one thing that has been kind of exacerbating the whole issue with this is the idea that these pipes are moving this much water around. Now, 
I can completely understand why that's the case. If you hover over the pipes, it'll tell you how much water is in them, and you can see them moving around. It's like, well, oh my goodness, all of this water is going somewhere. Now, there is a little bit of a, a glitch with that. This is... The visual feedback is completely divorced from what's actually happening under the hood, the numbers that are moving around. What we see here is if we look over the pipes, it's saying 10 kilograms of water, and you're seeing a, a packet moving. That little bubble has nothing to do with how much water is in the pipe. That bubble does not represent a packet of water, which happens to be 10 kilograms. That little bubble moving around is a purely um, visual representation of the flow of the liquids in the pipes. So, for example, let's say there was 10 kilograms of water here and no kilogram, no water in this pipe. Let's just assume that that could happen for a moment. It can't, but let's assume. Um, then when you see that bubble moving across, that would be 10, possibly 10 kilograms of water moving across. But if there was already 9 kilograms of water there, and only room for 1 kilogram, you'd still see that bubble moving across, even if it was only moving 1 kilogram. It would be the same if it was only moving 1 milligram of water across. And so that has exacerbated the problem of people hovering over the pipes, getting information that there's X much in the pipe, and then seeing a packet in their mind of liquid moving across into the machine, and assuming that all 10 kilograms just got dumped into the machine. That is not usually the case it's it's a there's a divorce between what you're seeing here and what's actually happening now that isn't particularly helpful to us but it's useful to know what's actually going on and that it might not necessarily be as big of a problem as people have been worried about now with all of that said and done we can uh, we have actually no valves yet we need to work on that and that's going to take a little while and then we can move on to some other things so how about we focus on our little hatch in here we want to make a nice little habitat for our hatch so with that said and done we're gonna pop this on a six actually i'm going to need to deconstruct the wall there Ooh, all i want is walls buildings uh yeah buildings i guess and furthermore uh, I'm not going to be able to dig in there, so I'm just going to dig around it instead. I want to make a, a little wider area for our little hatch. There we go. Perfect. And then I want some ladders going down there. Now, these... Uh, unfortunately... Hmm, I don't actually care for the mealwood. Just dig it up. That's fine. I want that out of the way so that we can prepare this area. The main thing is I don't want to harm our hatch. Our hatch is on this tile, I believe. In fact... Because I can't be absolutely certain of that, I'm going to cancel the tiles around it and we'll just prepare this area for now. We are going to build a little uh, storage thing down here and I'm going to fill it with dirt. The hatch apparently could just eat straight out of the, the storage container, which is fantastic. Honestly, I'm really, really pleased with that. Uh, this is unfortunate that so much CO2 is moving down into here. That is actually a big, big problem. Um, right, let me just double check on my air scrubber. That does just take uh, water in, water out. So, yeah, honestly, that, that seems reasonable for now. It produces contaminated water. We Once we've got the valves, we're going to be starting to play around with a few... Uh, we're going to be playing around with thermal uh, physics in the game. We're going to be cooling and boiling substances. We'll be liquefying gases. We'll be evaporating liquids and so on and so forth. And through that, we're going to start looking at ways that we can effectively uh, work on purifying liquids or, or um, cleansing gases as necessary without having to use any filtration me medium because eventually we're going to run out of sand and that's going to be a big thing once that happens it's going to be really really hard for us really really hard uh let's go ahead and pop that there as well so we can just grab that little bit of algae uh we'll also jump up here now to those who have been uh, commenting that uh, it's algae not algae i strongly suspect this is another one of those um British English versus American English sort of things. Certainly I've never heard it called algae except by Americans and primarily since Oxygen Not Included came out and I've been watching a couple of streams here and there. Uh, I I don't mind if you call it algae. I, I feel that we all know what we're talking about. Um, though I do hope that, that uh, those who have been pointing out that it's slowly rotting their brain here and we call it algae will... will afford me the same courtesy in that, yeah, I, I don't know which one's right. I suspect 
I, I don't know, my way is right for Britain, and since I live in Britain, uh, I'll, I'll keep calling it algae for now, if you don't mind. In the same way that I call Lieutenant Lieutenant, because that's the way it's said in Britain. Just one of those those little quirks about life, I guess. Ooh, again to the point of chlorine now. That is that is actually quite quite bad. Now, what I'm hoping is the chlorine getting pumped into the hydrogen generator simply won't do anything. But ultimately, I am actually going to want to. Hmm, I'm going to want to be able to shut that pump off. Is what I want. So let's make a power switch. Hmm, that's annoying. Um, that is actually quite annoying. I'm going to place a power switch right here, and I'm going to run this power up like this, and then over here, I'm going to deconstruct that electrical wire and then reconnect it to that light. So th this light will be on the main base network, this one will be powered, so I can shut it down if I need to, because I really don't, I don't want that being pumped into the base just yet. Ah, see, unfortunately, we were a little bit too slow. Now, my my greatest hope is that this will simply be consumed by my hydrogen generator and it won't be output. If it is, that's going to be a problem for us, but, you know, it's not going to be a, a drastic, horrible issue. But I am actually worried enough about this that I'm going to prioritize this as an 8. Let's get that done, please. Uh, furthermore, since I actually quite like the fact that, you know, we have this room nice and ready, we will hook that up. There we go. We are making a new lovely dining room for our new duplicants. Uh, we will soon work on their bedrooms as well. But for now, obviously, there are a couple of other things that we need to look into. Let's get all of this going. How is the oxygen at the moment? Um, we're lacking oxygen pressure pushing this CO2 around, which is which is a bit of a shame. But at this point, the uh, gas should be being shared between these two points, so it should be equalizing a little bit. Um, I do want C uh, O2 to sorry CO2. I said earlier, I do want the O2 pumped out here as well, but I think we may need to adjust the way that this branches really. Uh, if I have a second, yes, we can we can we can work with this. There's uh, another way that we can run this pipe, and effectively, I'm going to use the advice that I was given in the comments, and that is to make this much more like a a, a branching uh, tree rather than uh, a sequential set of forks, uh, because each one gets less and less of the over the overall output. We won't. Yeah, there's no easy way to get this to work, but what I was thinking of doing is we'll have the pipe came up here We'll split it off there and there so these two um, Vents will get equal amounts and then have a third exit coming down here and then splitting off again These will get half as much, but there's not a great deal I can do to avoid that for the time being unfortunately uh, unless no, I think that that will probably be the best thing that I can do for now. Uh, I will review this at a later date, though. So what we want is for this to come across around here. Uh, we'll have it split up about there and go up there, like so. Uh, we will then deconstruct gas pipes. I want this back on for this one. Uh, we will deconstruct these as an 8, right there, and indeed uh, along here as well right there because this is going to be the branch then we want this being built oh i've been building it out of the wrong substance like an idiot um and then we'll have another branch over hmm. we could have it split around here oh actually if we do it like this we are actually gonna evenly split it between the three. I was going to have four, but yeah, you know what, this this will work out just as well for us. So, sure, we'll do it this way, and everything should be reasonably uh, reasonably well uh, shared then. Uh, how's how's my, my little hatch? Hatch is burrowed. I really do need to cool this area down. That is going to be awkward, actually. But later on, I want a little hatch habitat. We are going to have to very, very uh, tightly use the um, creatures in the base. Oh, I need to turn that off. I completely forgot about that once I built it. That was a bit of a 
bit of a derp on my part. How is this function? Yeah, it's, it's just destroying the, the chlorine, which is fine. It's also sucking up oxygen, which is not quite so fine. Um, I would like to be able to branch that a little bit, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. That should be turned off for now. There we go. Excellent. But ultimately, we are going to need to use the animals in this uh, on this map to create a kind of um, any kind of real s uh, sustainability on our base. Because ultimately, we're going to run out of the resources that we need to sustain the base that we've got. However, with the creatures puffed, morb, and hatch, we might be able to create something uh, at least more sustainable. I mean, I don't think you can completely make a sustainable colony, but well, well. Uh, more hands, more bladder. Eh, not so keen on you. No, we're gonna reject everyone. Oh, except you. You look really good. Um, no, we're gonna reject all for now. At least until I have the remaining bedrooms done. Because currently we've got only one, two, three, four. Five and six. We need another four. And those other four are probably going to go around somewhere over here, I should imagine. And that will be uh, all set up correctly then. Uh, over here. I mean, honestly, I could just have that going up, I suppose. But I'd rather not for the time being. Uh, how's everything going? How are we doing for food? We're actually doing quite well for food at the moment. I would like to move a refrigerator up here so let's go ahead and get you built right about there seems reasonable and we will hook that up to power of course and make sure it's on copper uh sure i could bring this all the way down around that that's not going to be a problem there right how's everything else going have we sorted out the pipes yes yes we have perfect right all we need down here then is an output point for our gas there we go and we have completed our research perfect all right okay so back to insulation once we've got that uh i guess we'll go ahead and we will get the med bay um if only because i need the mesh tile for a plan i've got a little bit later on we've got at least one duplicate in this colony i believe who is destructive and i'm gonna stop excluding duplicates based on that quality all duplicates deserve a fair chance However, I am going to put out this warning right now. There is going to be a prison. And any duplicates that break anything. That's about the only crime that exists in this game so far. But that crime will carry only one punishment. There will be one crime and one punishment in this colony. Woe betide any duplicates who fall foul of our justice system. Because it will not forgive them. Uh, we are going to want to get up there and get at that algae if we can. Uh, let's make it a reasonably high priority, too. Um, let's go up there. In fact, if we can... Um, all of this coal. So tempting. But we don't actually need it just yet. What we do need is the algae, though. The algae is absolutely needed. And if we can, and that hatch goes to sleep down there, please go to sleep down here. Or, or there is also fine. Sleep time, hatch. That's right. You go ahead, eat. Then fall asleep, please. On this tile. Oh, perfect. Yes. Okay, this is all going, and we are building our stairs. Uh, sorry, our ladder down. And that is going to be grand. I'm going to leave the hatch with a natural habitat of, of rock and sand and all of that kind of stuff. The sand I might actually replace, but, you know, that's because sand is incredibly important. Right, let's have a look at the uh, air quality. Once that's built, we should start seeing air quality gradually improving and also we've also got the algae terrarium down there doing its best and, and generally speaking i'm fairly happy with the way things are honestly uh i am going to put in some gas permeable vents up here to allow this air out because i do not want that being trapped in the room but it's fine because we've got a decent amount of oxygen there right now the chlorine over here that is a worry that is genuinely actually a worry so we'll have to deal with that shortly uh that has all been dug out hopefully they can reach this uh in fact they should be over there here we go perfect i approve now uh, i'm hoping that this hydrogen isn't going to be able to get in there but eh, it might be able to we won't easily be able to tell that for now let's go ahead grab all of this if we can thank you we'll also remove that too i mean eventually i do actually want to hook into this hydrogen in there uh, it would actually be very useful to me uh, in fact i guess i could do that i could hook up a little pump over here and then just channel this hydrogen up 
Hmm. I mean, there's loads of algae over there. That would help run the uh, run the colony for a little while, certainly. Okay, well, we're going to slow things down, because now we do have access to our um, valves, so it's time to start playing around with that. Uh, first, we will get all of these harvested. Let's go ahead and do that. Is this being built? Yes, it has. So that now needs to be an 8, just like this one. We should have storing 100 kilograms of 100 kilograms. Storing 100 kilograms of 100 kilograms. At this point, we should be able to move that up to this refrigerator, which will be glorious. Let's just make sure that's all done. Uh, really? We're still at 100? Uh, that? Okay. Fair enough. I'm not sure what the uh, conversion... Well, I, I guess it's pretty obvious what the conversion rate of a meal lies in weight to uh, nutrition, considering it's given me all of that information there. But uh, we'll have a look into that in a little bit. Uh, organic... Yeah, we're doing all right with for now. Okay, so let's start with the liquid valves then. So we'll just get these going for now. So we want a liquid valve, and we're going to want... The input up here, and the output going straight down. Now, I do not know if these suffer in the same way that our other um, components do, in that the way it's going to branch. We'll just have to hope. We'll just have to hope that this will work. So let's put that in there. Uh, that can be made out of copper. Good. And then we want a liquid pipe made out of sandstone going across. And the output, uh, actually... Let's first deconstruct this liquid pipe here. This will be on an 8. Let's get that one out of the way. Then yeah, we'll hook all of that up. Now, does this require power of any kind? No, it does not. Good, good. That's actually really good. Let's go ahead and get this one made on an 8, please. We need this done super fast. Thank you. And then we'll get the plumbing installed as well. And this will go back... Oh. There we go, back out, like so. I should have prioritized that properly. Was, I'm a bit of a dirt for not having done so. Right, now this, I do not want 10 kilograms. I want one uh, kilogram at most. Um, a little bit less, perhaps. A little bit less is better than more, I think, because, again, it'll move how much it needs to into the electrolyzers, even though it'll look like it's pushing an extra... Um, 900 grams in, it's more than likely only pushing an extra 29 grams in to make up the difference to one kilogram. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so let's bring up the, the liquid now, and we can see this moving around just slowly. These are all running currently. We'll see if that continues up past all of this moving through. We'll just let that run for a little while and see if this is all going okay. It seems to be for the time being. Um, yeah, that seems to have corrected that problem. Okay, let's uh, slow this down. In fact, let's pause it so we can just have a quick look. Uh, where are we? There we are. It's got 1,054 grams there. This one, 1,089 grams. This one has 261 grams. Uh, over here, where are we? Can we see that at all? Uh, 10 kil uh, kilograms. We'll let the system run for a little while, then we'll check back on it, make sure that it's all running okay. But that's the first part sorted now. Uh, we could put uh, a similar system over here, I suppose, um, to try and manage the um, liquid going in here. But for the time being, I'm reasonably happy with what we got. I don't think we need to worry over much. However, that being said... Uh, a couple of people have mentioned that perhaps this isn't quite working the way it should be. Who just came out of there? Uh, unfortunately, I missed, you know. Uh, we'll have a look into that shortly and try and resolve that. Let's go ahead and cancel this work, though, because I really would like that to be swept now. As a, as a reasonably high priority, actually. It's been long enough that that place is, has been dirty. And the same over here. These are important rooms that I really do want to be swept and kept very, very clean. Uh, let's check on people's vitals. Uh, generally, stress is being managed quite well. Decor expectation, minus 0 0.2, and interrupted sleep. Okay, so that's a little bit of a shame. That doesn't actually add up either, but okay, that's fine. I guess it's a rounding to uh, two decimal places. Uh, generally speaking, though, things are starting to look nice. This, this room right here is actually quite a problem for me. I don't like it at all. Maybe I should move this valve over here and push 
all of the CO2 out. In fact, that is actually, I really should have thought of that first, because that, that makes an awful lot of sense. So, um, sure, well, you know what, I, I don't like, um, okay, you're a bit of a pain. Okay, we'll run it across there, we'll place in the gas output point, and then we'll simply deconstruct this. There we go. That should solve that that issue there. Okay, so we've got plenty of stuff going on. I would like to build our hatch, a, a wee storage bin down here. A nice little place for it to chnom to its heart's content. What's under there? Is that obsidian? No, that's igneous rock. Somebody's, oh, wait, it was telling me that I was going to build out of obsidian. I'm a derp. I will pop that in there, and I would like this. Uh, this will only contain dirt. I think that's about the only thing that we really need to put in there. We've got ridiculous amounts of dirt, and I'm fairly certain that the hatch will eat dirt. I could be wrong, and if I am, then I guess what we're going to be putting in there is probably igneous rock, because uh, it's not particularly useful to me. Uh, we've got some skill increases, but there we go. That's the that's the first part of our system upgrade. We do need a gas uh, valve now as well, so where would that be? Gas valves, it's not actually that big of a construct. It's not too bad at all. Uh, we'll pop the gas valve right about there i think and likewise we are going to have the gas moving across there and then both of these connecting up here the output point will then move down there so that needs to all be prioritized but we also do need to break it down so i would like this to be gas pipes only and we are going to delete all of those gas pipes and all of these gas pipes as well this way should work out for us and then we can uh, move these up to a priority eight as well now that we've done that i could have just run that gas pipe along there oh well oh well i say oh well uh let's have a look at our gas there we are it's starting to push the co2 out but uh co2 is getting a little bit a little bit of a worry in here honestly i, I need a little bit more pressure at the top than all the way down the bottom because we're, we're effectively Creating a bottleneck is as if you imagine uh, an hourglass. Imagine that it started life as just a cylinder. In fact, it probably did. But then you put pressure near the middle instead of at the top or strictly at the bottom. You're just going to create a choke point. You're going to push more of the gas up to the top and down to the bottom. It's not only really going to go the way that you want. So we're creating a bubble of CO2 above and below this pressure point, which lies across there. We need to deal with that. So, for example, uh, a gas pump around here would probably fix it, since it would also then add uh, extra pressure pushing that oxygen down. We'll have a look into that probably in the next episode now, though. Right, let's have a look at you, my lovely. Uh, we oh, uh, unfortunately can't select that unless we do it like this. There we go. Okay, we're not really producing much in the way of uh, hydrogen gas contents 85.5 grams of hydrogen. How much does my hydrogen uh, generator accept in one go? It'll accept 100 grams of hydrogen at a time so we want to reduce this to about that level uh push that up to 100 grams and we should be good in fact that's oh well that's that's what it was that, that's what it was all along i'm a dip um okay well that doesn't seem necessarily that bad i wonder if that's the um maximum amount in a pipe let me actually quickly look at that perhaps we didn't need that uh liquid pipe gas pipe uh, the gas pipe there, um, does it say anything? Contents empty? No, it does, it can, can carry much more. It's just the, uh, gas valve has a much smaller, um, maximum pressure. But that's fine, that's, that's actually what we wanted. So, uh, that all works out quite well for us. So, we are now ensuring that only the correct amount of hydrogen reaches our hydrogen generator in time. That's going to need to be addressed. But I, I think we are going to need to put some sort of, um, gas valve around here pushing this co2 down we're preventing it from flooding that way we're preventing it from going across but it is becoming an issue in here uh, it is becoming quite an issue one that we desperately need to solve um in fact if we maybe put one in there we could push it down a little bit no i i, th I think ultimately we need we need the pressure here as well. That's a that's a bit of a shame, but we'll see what we can do. There's a lot of gas pressure in here. The alternative is simply having a CO2 scrubber. Um, we can definitely set up another one of those. 
somewhere in fact even in there or, or down here for example that will simply pull this co2 out of the air and turn it into contaminated water because the co2 scrubber the the nice thing about that is it does actually turn the co2 into something um it turns it into well i mean it adds it to water it becomes contaminated water now that is going to be important for us later down the road once we get into boiling and condensing um, gases and liquids that that's going to be an important thing for us to know but that's going to be it for this episode i do hope you enjoyed though and i'm looking forward to the next we've corrected some of the more glaring problems in the colony and we're going to be going forward with a better a better foundation as a result the next big project for us is we need rooms for our duplicates because frankly it's not it's not uh uh, allowed for them to just have to sleep on the floor as they are right now we need to give them proper bedrooms and then we need to make sure that this bedroom isn't constantly full of co2 because that is pretty bad but that is it from me so thank you very much for watching i do hope you've enjoyed and remember to like if you liked sub if you haven't and i'll see you next time take care everyone